So in the previous video, I introduced my system for numbering projects and parts and naming files. So in this video, I'm going to show how I structure my projects in Fusion 360 and use those project and part numbers to name my files. So when you create a Fusion 360 account, um, it'll ask you to create a um, team account associated with your email address. Um, so this is called a team account, but it's really more like just your personal projects folder um, because you can only create one team per email address that you put in. Um, so you do have some sharing settings at the top level so you can add other people to your team, um, but rather than us using that, usually what I'll do is immediately in my home folder create a folder for my company I'm working with right now. Um, so in this case I'm just using example company. So that way I can control the sharing at this level under this people tab and just share this folder um, rather than adding people to all my projects that I work on. So after I've created the my company folder, um, there's one folder that I always put into a new project and that is components. Um, what I'll use this for is if I'm using any reference components, um, say I'm making a case, a housing for an electronics device like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, and I want to drop in a pre-made CAD model of those circuit boards. Or I'm using a lot of existing hardware, and I have the files downloaded from McMaster Car, um, and I just want to upload those. So the reason I put it here is I can upload all my components um, into this folder, and I might sort this, might make some subfolders here for like hardware versus electronics, um, but that way all my reference components for a given company are in one place. Now, going back up to here, I might, if I'm only going to do one project for this company, I might just start creating my assembly files right away. If I'm going to do a lot, I might make some subfolders here but this way, if I ever want to pull in a component to any of my projects for that company, I just go to the top level and they're all under components. So in this case, since it's an example, I'm just going to have one project going. So I'm going to start creating files right here. So as I mentioned before, I first will create my top level assembly file. So I by default, Fusion opened a blank document. I'm just going to start by saving that. Um, and so my part number for this that we talked about before was EC for example company, 23 for the year, project one, variant zero. And this is my main assembly, so I'll make it assembly number 00, zero and name it main assembly. So you'll see that'll show up here. And now that it's saved, we could start dropping components in if we wanted to. Um, but in this case, I'm going to start by modeling a subassembly and some parts. And I won't do that right in this main assembly. I'll go ahead and create a new design. Again, I'll just save it right away. Same project number. Assembly number 01. and subassembly one. And again, I'm saving this right away so that if I wanted to start pulling in reference components, it will let me drag and drop those in since it's a saved file. Now, going from here, um, I'll start creating my parts right inside this file. Um, one kind of unique feature about Fusion is you don't have to specify whether a file is a part or an assembly. Um, all files are basically assemblies and you can then just create parts that are within that. Um, so as I go create parts, I'll, um, as I'm creating parts using new component, I will then name those with my same part number or project number. One, oh. I'll use my subassembly number for the subassembly I'm currently in. And then I'll add a part number starting at 1. And again, I will name it 
something readable. So now you can see I have a part added here with the name I wanted, um, and I can select back and forth whether I'm viewing the assembly or working on a part. Um, I don't typically put version numbers in anything um, because Fusion 360 automatically tracks versions, which you can see these little V1 symbols here. Um, if you click drop down on those, you'll see every time you save the file, it creates a version um, that you can quickly um, save as a milestone or open and then jump back to that point in time. Now, if I'm exporting files to share with someone, you'll notice Fusion 360 automatically adds this V1 at the end. Um, sometimes I'll take that off if I just want to keep overwriting the file I have on my computer. So like if you have, if you're using Google Docs, which also tracks file versions, you might just do that. Um, if you want to maintain separate copies, um, I might add an underscore there just to get rid of the white space, but I'll just leave the version number from Fusion tacked on at the end. So that way, when my files are sorted, they're not looking at the version numbers. They're sorting by my project and part numbering system, um, but you can quickly see what version was saved. And that's basically all I do for organizing my files using my part numbering system um, and a couple folders. So to summarize, I have a components folder in my project um, to store any general purpose reference components. Um, I have my assembly files stored here, um, numbered starting at 00, 0 for the main assembly and then 01 and up for sub-assemblies. And then parts are just created within their sub-assemblies um, using this new component command. In the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about what this new component option actually means and how I use that to organize my sketches and bodies and can operation timeline infusion so that it's easy for me to modify my files later.